<laughs> What's good, YouTube? How y'all doing? What's happening on this Monday night? Can y'all hear me? Let me know. What's up, Carl and Cyrus? What's good? What's up, Blasphemer? What's up, Chris? What's popping? Hey, if y'all could sh share this out on y'all social medias, got a late start tonight, man. Life was stuff going on. What's up, in my forces? What's good, Chris? I'm good, man. I'm good. Blessed. Thankful. Let me say. I'm saying here, Shannon. It's a, what's up, DR? What's popping? All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to do a, a quick question and answer tonight for any questions that y'all may have. If y'all are like preparing for jobs this week, maybe some technical questions, or if y'all looking for different resources, just kind of wanting to get you know in front of the camera, talk to y'all, and see how y'all week going and how y'all weekend was. I had to rebuild my lab, like my whole lab setup. Like even the area where I'm at now, I had to rebuild everything. I got to, it's crazy. So, but I got everything back up, pretty much running. I still ain't got my lab set up correctly because I'm I'm separating everything. So it's been, it's been a long couple of days trying to get everything reconfigured. So when I go live, everything is set up appropriately. So I can share and, you know, give you all the information that y'all need. And y'all asked for <clears throat> last year, right? GNS or even G. I mean, GNS3 is free. I believe even G may cost a little bit, but whichever one works for you. You know what I mean? For me, I use GNS3 when I was using it, but I hear great things about even G. I never used it. Maybe Kelvin can answer that better. Well, Kelvin should be live on, on the live stream Sunday. Maybe he can answer a little better. What's up, King Remy? What's good? Yo, my day was blessed, man. Besides, you know, dealing with my live stuff, um, it's, it's been a great day. You know what I mean? No complaints. What's up, Carl Cyrus? Daryl Banks. Man, I cannot get my gene. gene. What's, hey, what problem are you having, Daryl? Let me know. Mo Fire, Mo Fire. What's good? Shout out from Canada. Shout out to Canada in the building. What's good? What part of Canada are you from, family? John Morrow, what's popping? Daryl Banks. Yeah, what's what you getting, Daryl Banks? What's going on with that GNS3? Hey, are any of y'all using Python or interested in using Python? Are any of y'all working on that that Linux CompTIA beta exam? What's going on, George G? What's good? Because if you are work, I got some links that you might be interested in. What's up, Dale? What's popping, family? Good to see you, Cuzzo. Thanks for thanks and shout out to all the moderators. What's good? Xander, what's popping? Xander, yes to what? Yes, you want learning Python, or yes, you're working on the Linux um, beta exam. King Remy, I had skill port, but the lives on there are confusing. Any advice? What you working on, King Remy? Skill skill port for what? For skill saw or skill port? Which for what? Have you built anything with that? Yeah, so with that Miko, I did some SSH into devices, running some shell commands, and pushing some commands out. So, but basic. I'm working on something a little more complex, but that Miko doesn't seem too hard. It's just understand, understanding which libraries to kind of combine with it to get to do it, what you wanted to do. Yeah, so if you're looking to learn Python, I got some resources real quick. I'm going to put them. In the link of the description, and I'm gonna put them in this video real quick. So hold on. So there's some free online Python courses that, like, through MIT. Shout out to Kowasi, dude I work with. He put me on to him. So. What I want to do is share them to y'all because y'all might be interested in these courses. Like I said, they're free. They're online. They're like some lecture videos from MIT. Check these out. With some free courses for Python. And I'm going to have some more too. But I'm also going through David Bumble's Python course. But I wanted to get that one out to you. And I may have some more. But that one is a really good course and it's free. 
So, and it's through MIT. So, check that out. But, I mean, yeah, when I study for a long time, it, it can get draining, but you got to know when to break. You know what I mean? For me, I, I study for a good length and then I take a break, do something else, and come back to it. You know what I mean? It's It, it happens. You can't overstudy. You got to take those breaks when you need it. Yeah. Let me see. Sorry, Python. Let me call. Um, yes. <clears throat> a little bit of Python network programmability. Yeah, so besides... Let me let me get this NetMiko library. If any of you never use NetMiko, on let me see. So here's the GitHub for NetMiko, if you haven't checked it out, and then there's also. Actually, here's the blog for all the libraries for NetMiko, I think. No, that's not the one we want. I'm trying to find it. Anyway, here's the GitHub for NetMiko. You all can check that out. Running this with Python. And what I also use for with Python is PyCharm. Not sure if you all know anything about Python, but this is the IDE through JetBrains that I use for my Python. It makes it easier to basically run run your scripts when you write them. Okay, Ottawa. Shout out to Ottawa. That's what's good. Hey, King King Remy, if you're going through that security plus, I'm the Professor Messer has so many videos on YouTube that pretty much cover it, and I'll put that in the description in this chat too. So, but from everybody that I know that took the security plus here recently, they say Professor Messer is the one that. You should highlight. So, Professor Messer K plus. All right, cool. Yeah. So he, here's the whole 501 course through Prof, Professor Messer. Um, and I believe he has like a study group and everything that'll help you get that certification. So if you st if you're struggling with the skill port. Check out Professor Messer. Maybe he'll explain it a little simpler um, and be easier for you to follow along. Good luck, family. Um, Daryl Banks, he says, I got an errand in VMware about SCSI and SATA not being enabled. Hey, Daryl, for me, I didn't use VMware. Like, I use the GNS3 application. I don't use the um, the, ISO, the ISO. And I use the straight application. I install it. They're executable on my system and that's what I use. I've never used a VMware setup. So maybe just download it and get it working that way and see if you can get it working. What's up, Tony E? What's good? Dual mutual redistribution. I see you fam. Let me see. Currently working on that CCNA security. Okay, Assad. Send that's all that's all about all of my videos. Corey Clay, what's good? Michael Lattimore says I have one but I've been IT twelve years. 12 years working with uh, layer one equipment, T1 circuits. Okay, can I, how can I be a network engineer when I'm going to college or getting my CCNA? I mean, a lot of what you do working with circuits, it sounds like you work with Lex or ISPs. Either one, you've been in the industry. The best thing to do is to put that on your resume and start applying. You can work in a knock. You can be a network technician. You can move up to network engineer if you start at level one in the right environment. So with you already been in the field, the CCNA is going to help you. Now, going to college, that's going to take time. But working towards like a CSET or network, even the network plus, just to show that you have, that you're able to learn. But I would go for the CSET route and the CCNA. Um, yeah, if you want to make that transition, especially with the experience you already have, Put it on your resume. Make sure you're talking about the circuits that you worked on. Your the Lex, if you did Lex installs, whatever you did to troubleshoot that, those environments, whatever tools you use, whatever ticketing system you use, put all that on your resume. Whatever projects you were on, put all that on your resume and apply for the positions you want. Don't let the certification or school limitations stop you. But 
get the CCNA. <laughs> That'll definitely help you get to where you want to go. Chris Rock, oh yeah. I used it really good. All right, cool. More fire more for, for Genesis 3. Do you have to purchase the simulation for the routers and switches? Uh, Mo Fire, you got to get those from Cisco. Tony E. Jabbar said, what's up? Shout out to uh, the router and switching guy. Mm. Just did a class on that plus. Okay, okay. Trying to kick my butt. <laughs> Say, hey, it, it happens. You that you got to start somewhere. You feel me, fam? This channel is so effective. Thank you. Hey, I'm glad to help, fam. Daryl Banks, uh, sent a screenshot via Twitter. Okay, send it to me, Daryl. But like I said, I didn't. I never installed GNS3 using uh, VMware. I just installed it on my computer and run it that way because I didn't really do all the virtualization that you can do in it for the switches and the VMs. For me, I just wanted to learn route switch. <laughs> so, you know, running BGP, um, redistribution, and everything that you can do to get your C, um, past your CCMP route, that's what I did. That's what I focused on. Cool. What's up, Stay Well, What's good? Um, just at what point? Uh, uh oh, PC battery low. PC battery low. Stand by. We're gonna make it. PC battery low. Made it. Cool. Back on. Appreciate y'all for standing by. J Desi, 13. It's an A plus, never plus. Hey, J. Dassey, for me, the A+, plus, the Network+, plus, or the C same for a beginner, depends on what you want to do. If you don't have any experience, the A+, plus is a great place to start. And the C same, either one of those is a great place to start for me. Now, if you're trying to get in the field real quick, the A+, plus is probably going to get you in there quicker than the C same, I think, I would say. But the A+, plus is a good place to start. Cool. Um, let's see. Mike Martin, what's good, fam? They said, do CompTIA search really have value? Yeah, CompTIA search have value. I, I talk about this all the time, but Security Plus has is probably the most valuable for me. You know, their, their, what is it? Their pen test exam and the rest of their security search are picking up steam from my understanding. But Security Plus is pretty much the go-to when it comes to getting the security. And A Plus, for somebody that's has no tech experience and trying to get a desktop help desk job or whatever just to get in their foot in the door. The A plus is a as a cert that gives you your foundation of how computing works at the hardware and software level. So for me, getting that certification there, getting in the field, getting experience, and then going to a more advanced cert, yes, CompTIA certs have value. There's no other entry level service that really much compares to like the A plus as far as being baseline teaching you that level of information. Think about it. MCSA is like three exams. The MTA is cool, but eh, <laughs> I don't know how many people have that as a minimum requirement. Haven't seen it much. And then the ITIL is a great cert, but it's not really teaching you computing and hardware. So for me, the A plus has value. Security plus, both of those have value to get in the field. In the security plus, you can start out with a good amount of money, just entry level, if you can get a clearance and get the right security position. What's up, Nabzine? 
yo, OG studying for the CCMP switch while watching the stream. Hey, get it in. That's what's up. What you, what you working on? What you working on that CCMP switch? What you living up, fam? Live every day. What's up, Marvin B? What's good? Hey, bro, much respect. Much respect to you, family. Hey, what's up, DVZN Media? Yo, sh shout out to the homie. Yo, my man checking in. Cool. Hey, I'm going to have DVZN Media on the channel. Um, Hold on. Let me see if we pull up his channel real quick. He does tech reviews, and he knows computing like the back of his hand. So all of you that are looking for a dope system or looking for the right system to lab every day or looking for that lab gear and tech gear that you can't go without, check out DVZ and Media because he is that dude. Great reviews, great music, and he is a smooth brother. Shout out to him. All right, let me see. There's been a lot of questions in here. Let me see where we at. All right, so <clears throat> Jay Dash, he says, I want to be a network engineer. So if you want to be a network engineer, family, your best route is to go for that CSET and work on that CCNA and then get a job as soon as possible. <laughs> Even before you get the CSET, try and get a network tech, a, net, a knock, something to just get your foot in the door. And when I say knock, look for local MSPs, managed service providers that are in your network. Oftentimes, they support multiple clients. And so what they need is somebody just to be on a help desk per se, to monitor um, different sites for outages and do reporting, which will basically, sometimes you get to do basic troubleshooting and that can really help you learn and it'll give you time to study on duty in between tickets and outages and stuff. What's up, Jerome Weaver, what's good? Last link broken? Hey, which link was broken? Let me know. Cause I send it, I send it back if it is. Can you hear me? No doubt. Aside, uh, did you buy Cisco software? Um, you can get Cisco software, especially if you got a CCO account and um, it's authorized. So there's ways to get it. LW Coach, what's good? How you answer the interview question? What's your biggest weakness? Um, for me, when I answer that question, what's my biggest weakness? It's something that I all I'm, that I'm aware of. Like, let's say, if I um, know that my weakness is that I may put too much on my plate, so I have to make sure that I manage my time and be um, and I schedule accordingly and and be aware of that. You know, because when you're in the field, there's easy to get a ton of projects, and if you're not managing that well. Um, you can fall behind. So one of my weaknesses in, in that situation is that that I will put too much on my plate. So I have to constantly be aware of what I have on my plate and making sure that I'm giving, I'm prioritizing and, and providing an ad adequate amount of, of energy into the right priorities and not just putting things on my plate and allowing things to fall on the black back burner. So I use things like my calendar, OneNote, um, reminders, <laughs> everything that I can do to make sure that I'm staying up on, um, staying on point. And then also I make sure that I update my tickets because when you have a lot of tickets you're working on, if you don't update your tickets, let's say a day or two goes by and that SLA may be getting close and you may have already worked on that ticket, but if you got 10 tickets in your system and you haven't updated your ticket, now you're going back trying to find the what's been done over something you already did. So I made sure that I put notes in my tickets and everything that I can do. So that way, if I have a lot on my plate, I can handle it. That's how I, that's how I answer it. It could be right, it could be wrong, but it's honest. <clears throat> Damn. You don't need VMware. No, you don't need VMware, fam. You can just install, there's a, um, if you go to GNS3 site, you can just install it on your computer. And then once you install it on the computer, you load the images, unless they changed it. But from my understanding, you can just, and if anybody else is in the chat, <laughs> you can just install GNS3 on your computer and lab up like that. Now, you won't have the full functionality with all the, the virtual stuff, but you can get your routers going. Let me see. Keto said, Mike Rogers. Okay. Corbin said, what do you think is the best CCIE uh, between security wireless and route switching, which one is future pro? I mean, <laughs> 
for me, a CCIE, if you if you talk future future proof, all three of those are going to be good. Now, security and wireless, they have more going. Like route switching is not really going to change, you know, unless except for the automation part. But BGP isn't going nowhere. EIGRP isn't going nowhere. OSPF isn't going anywhere. So that'll probably be one that doesn't have the most changes compared to security and wireless. So all three of those is a good choice. It's up to you what you want to do. Now, wireless is going through major changes with the 5G and then what is the WPA3 that's coming out. And then, you know, security, all the changes that's going on in security. So it's if whatever path you choose, I don't believe you can go wrong. What's up, Eric Black? What's good? Zachary Ballard, what's good? Stayed up late enough to catch a stream. Hey, man, I, my bad, Zach. You know, my goal is to get on here at 8.30 every day. But, you know, family come first, and sometimes things just come up, and I just make sure that, okay, if I'm going to be late or if I'm going to get on, I still get on, you know what I mean? Because somebody's out there is going to need some help or may have questions that I just want to be here, you know what I mean? Xander said, I, okay, cool. Help him out, Xander. Cool. Keto. Okay. Let me get out here. Hey, thanks for that super chat, fam. You're going to make me scroll all the way down to the bottom. He's like, man, he's taking too long. <laughs> hey, thanks, Rodney. He said, question from one of my coworkers. Do you prefer working in a small or large company? It all depends on what you want to do. Um, each one has its benefits. When it comes to a small company, you're probably going to be able to touch more um, touch more um, technology. When I say touch more technology, you won't just be silo into working on routers or switches. You may even work on some VMware. You may even work on some servers. You're going to be able to touch a lot of different technologies. Now, because it's a smaller company, you may not be able to have multiple sites that you're working on. You may not be able to work on um, across the WAN as you would in a larger company, but at the same time, you get a whole, a variety of experience in one place. And then it also has its limitations with change control and other things that large companies have in place, smaller companies may not. They just may need you to fix and you're putting out fires all day. So that it depends on where you're at in your career and what you really wanna do. For me, the most beneficial for me was working in a smaller environment. But now I prefer a larger environment because I can actually work on WANs over multiple sites. So I'm looking for a next level experience rather than putting out fires all day. I want to learn projects and I want to work with BGP. I want to work with um, MPLS. I want to work with Cisco um, on large scale troubleshooting best practices. All of that that's you will find in a larger company is what I'm where I'm at now. But if you're early in your career to me, and you really need to spend the smaller environment may be the best route to go um, then. Or if you just like, you know, that hands-on and just a whole lot on your plate and getting it in, sometimes that smaller company can be the way to go. But the larger company, if you are the go-to, can be the same as being in a smaller company, just on a larger scale. <clears throat> Ain't no problem, Michael Lattimore. Uh, Marvin B said, do you think um, database? Hey, let me know if that answered your question, uh, family. But uh, Marvin B said, do you think databases and servers are the main um, hardwares for business and aspect of IT? No, I think <laughs> when it comes to databases, databases are very important in servers. I think everything works together, you know. You need your networking equipment, so that's very important. If your network, if your WAN goes down, you're not going to be able to access your databases and your servers. So it all it all serves its own purpose. So I don't think one is more important um, than the other. But as far as the money maker, you need your uptime on your network and you need your service to be available and your applications to work. So I think if, if that's what your question, there is really no um, main hardware. Is it all serves its purpose. Xander, um, Dwight, if you're <clears throat> using Windows VM, you know, work better if you get more features. VM player. Yeah, uh, I understand that, Xander. I understand if you're using a VM for GNS3. 
it will give you more features. I just never needed it. Like I got my lab, so I virtualize and do everything in there. Um, and when I'm on the go, I'm really just working on route switch. So Jerome Weaver said, what's good? He said, experiences uh, worth more than a degree in entry level IT. Yeah, experience is everything. I mean, a degree, I've always said that a degree pays off towards the, like your middle senior of your career. When you're looking to be a manager, when you're looking for those senior roles, having a degree is when it actually pays off. Or if you're trying to get an in internship when you first get your degree, I don't think a, enough people take advantage of internships that are out there. You got companies like Cer Cerner, you got um, with the pathways through the USA jobs. You got a lot of companies that Google that actually look for interns. And I don't think enough people take advantage of getting their degree and applying for internships. So it's all about how you market yourself and the resources that you utilize to get to where you want to be. <clears throat> Is it worth to get Microsoft search? I mean, they got their perfect purpose. The MCSA, that's always a good search to have if you want to be in servers. And then Azure, those Azure search can make you a lot of money, just like AWS um, search can make you a lot of money. So yeah, Microsoft search and SQL, if you're certified in SQL. So yeah, Microsoft search are good. Derek Holloway, what's good, family? Good to see you. I had three content certs, A+, plus, Network+, plus, and Security+. Plus. Good stuff, family. Um, stay woke. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I got my CCO account on lock. Thanks, fam. And no problem, family. Follow David Vaughn for it. It required download a hypervisor. <clears throat> I mean, Daryl, when they say download a hypervisor, it's just saying um, hypervisor type one or type two. Type two is going to be um, VM Workstation, VM Player installed on top of your Windows. So you can download VM Player, which is free, or you can download VM Workstation. And then the other one, which I never use, I always forget. There's another one that's free. Um, it's a virtual box. You can download virtual box. And that's called a type two hypervisor when you install it on the top of your desktop. And you can run it that way. I'm not sure how you're actually setting it up on a server or whatever, but if you run it as a type two hypervisor, and boot it in your computer, that's probably the best way. And let me hop on Twitter and see the picture that you sent me. Okay, it looks like you're running VM Workstation. All right, good stuff. I said SCSI or SATA, CD-ROM, or virtuals. All right, so. Down the maps, send C. Okay, so you got it installed. Uh, SCSI hard drive, unsuccessful, SATA, CD-ROM. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's wanting you to do. Did you go through the, what, what kind of laptop are you running? So you're running Windows 10. All right, do you, what kind of, Here's a question. Looks like you got an IBM laptop. I can see the little red dot or whatever. Do you have an Intel processor? What type of processor do you have? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why you're getting this error. Do, did you, do you have enough space? Did you actually map the right drives that I need you to write and map? Yeah, I will go through the whole setup again, family just to make sure you're following along. And then I will make sure that your processor, which it shouldn't be a problem, but I will make sure your processor is compatible. But that, that shouldn't be a problem though. <clears throat> is, Cisco, is Cisco Business IT something you can learn without? Yeah, get on, hop on Cisco's uh, website and just start reading it up on Cisco best practices and the way Cis Cisco does business. Just start researching and following what Cisco does. That's the best way I can send it. I can um, tell you. Chris Robert is is a plug in. Have <laughs> you turned it on? <laughs> cool. I'm gonna get on into the to the bottom. Real quick. Oh, y'all got jealous about my power cord. <laughs> cool. What's up, Dean? What's good? Thanks for tuning in. Y'all, if y'all have not liked this video, please like this video. I'm going to get up out of here in a minute, about two minutes. 
I'm going to try and get another question or two before I'm up out of here. Creed, you went to the Navy mode for a second. <laughs> uh, from from to start a lab, do I have to start with a... <clears throat> nah, you can lab with whatever. I started with a 2950. That was my first switch. If you got a 3750 POE, you are the man, family. Dad says uh, there's a lot of inner parts of GNS3. So, yeah, facts. Or be I study for Conti all summer. Now, I'm Cisco all winter. Facts. Cisco gonna, Cisco gonna make that career jump like crazy. Chris O'Rock, Crabber, this is how you study outside of. <clears throat> yeah, outside of live stream, the study is going well. I mean, outside of my lab having issues, but outside of that, I mean, most of the stuff I'm studying, I do at work. So that helps a lot. Jamar, is it a good place to learn Cisco command or labs for beginners? Yeah, I got Hey, Jamar, I just did a video on like one of my live shows, I believe last week was on the top Cisco CLI show commands you should know. Check that out. Go through that. And I pretty much walk you through all the show commands you should know. I got labs on it. And then on YouTube, there's a whole bunch of free lives you can follow through, like David Bumble and a bunch of other people got free stuff with Packet Tracer. Or if you got a, a physical lab, you can start there. Dre, the PC technician. What's good, family? Good to see you. Dean Murray said, what's the... Hold on. Let me get, let me get at this, Derek. He said, my employer does not recognize my search only wants me to work the help desk. They want me to complete a in-house objectives. So I'm leaving work as the in five years, working at SD for five years. <clears throat> you know, Derek, um, if your employer does not recognize your service, you, and, but they have in-house objectives, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that. If that's a question, are you? Is that a question? Because if it's not a question, I don't want to give you no advice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it, you may already have it, have it figured out. So I don't want to sway you another way. You know what I mean? If it's a question, let me know before I get up out of here. <clears throat> you skipped my question. Ah, uh, my bad, Leno. It says um, you you skipped my question about catalyst switches. When your body was about to die. Hey, what's the question? You gonna have me scroll way back up? Ask the question again, fam. And I'll answer before I get up out of here. Drone Weaver, I'm getting it. Oh, man. Hey, you get that Dell um, R720. That's what's up. How much RAM you gonna get in that thing? That's the question. So, JW, what's good? If you had a chance to redo your career, would you do it different? No, I wouldn't. I would not do it different. I'm blessed. Everything I've been through made me who I am today. So there's no point in doing it, doing it again. All right, let me see. Ah, <clears throat> uh, okay, Daryl. You didn't map the right drives. Okay, that's what I was wondering. If you didn't, it had to be like drives or something. Can you explain? All right. Been live and says 10 a.m. Central. I see you. Make sure you get that rest. We talked about that yesterday in the live stream. Not sure if you tuned in, but you gotta get that. You gotta get rest. Yeah, hey, that's what I use too. Free <clears throat> Tony E. I use um free NAS also as well in my lab. So I got documentation on how to set that up. And let me see. Now, a lot of times it's, it's particular about which version of free NAS you use. I use an older version because I find that works best. But check this out. There's documentation on setting up free NAS in your, in your lab if you need it. Let me let me find Derek Holloway. Oh, so that is a question. I mean, if your employer does not recognize your search, what I would do is update my resume, showing all my search, put my resume on job boards. I would put my profile and my certifications 
in my updated LinkedIn profile out there. Let recruiters know that I'm interested in jobs and I will kind of see what's out there, you know, but I would also, if the employer wants you to do those in-house objectives, I would go for those too, because those may actually be some pertinent information to help you improve. And you never know, um, doing those in-house objectives could also get your promotion, but I would definitely update my resume and keep that out there just to see what's out there because you never know, um, what opportunities you're passing up. So if you feel like you're worth more and there's better opportunities out there, update your resume, put it out there and see what happens. H hopefully that, that helps you family. Dewan, do you have a discord? No, I do not have discord. I got enough social medias family. <laughs> Much love Zika, but man, Hey, I'm not really the social media type guy. I try and manage my time enough. I hop on here. This is my discord right here. Reggie Butler, what's good? What up, D? I just got out of my N007 class Thursday. It's the last day of class before I leave. I'm going to put... Um, the, okay, I see you. That's what's up. How the class going? Hopefully it's going good for you, family. I use... It's just a pair of sign here. Cool. There was one more. I just hooked up my church network. I put a, a stack of 37... Man, look at you. I see you, Rodney. That's what's up. Man, hey, you put that in your church? Your church got network is the business. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, man, what's your church moving over there, family? Like, <laughs> let me find out your church over there moving gigabytes. That's what's up, fam. Over there, got terabytes of data. Man, that's what's up. Let's talk about your parts of getting in, not taking it, not. Cool. Oh, that was one more person I was trying to get out before I get out of here. I'm trying to find who it was. Um, Dean Murray, yes, I have and I do. I got one already. Cool. Y'all, if y'all have not liked this video, please like this video. Um, what's up, Tom? Yo, shout out to my boy Antonio. And all the moderators that's been in here, these are some very helpful people. And I, I got much love and much appreciation for y'all, not only just them, but everybody that tunes in. I hope y'all find these live streams helpful. Um, my goal is to go live every day for the rest of the year, which would be my 100 days of live, putting out information that I believe would be helpful to you and just giving y'all my time to, you know, bring us all together and answer the questions that you may be having. Hope y'all enjoy it. And it's useful and helpful for the most part. That's what I need. I want y'all to change our lives. I want y'all to get to where I want to be. And if I can help do that, that's a blessing. If I can just connect you with somebody to help you do that, that'd be a blessing. If I can just pass along that information, that'd be a blessing. And I'm thankful. You know what I mean? Facts. 100 days of live and 100 days of helping, 100 days live, all that. That's what's up. Trevor Mays, thank you for helping me on my journey. You're welcome, fam. Thank everyone in here. Facts. Hey, you're welcome, Marvin B. Cool. Okay. Produce no excuse. No excuse. This is the last question before I'm up out of here. Real quick. Just want to say I appreciate you, bro. Real talk. You helping people change the line. Keep doing your thing. Currently studying for my security plus. Any study references you recommend? Yeah, I got a video on that, fam. Like, I went through it and let me see. But Professor Messers, I talked about it earlier. I don't know if you was on the live stream, but I'm going I'm to give you this link. I don't really like plugging myself, but I put a lot of work into this video. And it's going to tell you everything you need to know for that Security Plus. And anybody else that is working to get it, this will have all the information you need and all the resources that are out there. And they just had his mug on standby because I get asked this question a lot. So... And if you found it helpful, share it out, please. Cool. All right. So here you go. Much love, J. War. Cool. There's a video for one hour. Cool. Hey, I appreciate y'all. I'm up out of here and I'll catch y'all on the next one. 100.